importance of labor rights. Um, but one of the things I found was that there was a disconnect between advocates sort of internationally, human rights NGOs outside of Bangladesh, and then what the workers were saying and how the workers were advocating for their rights. And because I saw this disconnect, I wanted to sort of tell the stories from the workers' perspective, therefore workers' voices. Um, the idea from the film, uh, I'm a lawyer, uh, I'm not a filmmaker, so this is sort of a, a, a odd place for me to find myself, but when you have to tell a story, sometimes you go into the domain in which maybe it's not your own, but you find a way to tell the story. Uh, while I was researching, uh, I, uh, I used to videotape all the interviews because I have horrific, <laughs> like horrible handwriting. And one of the organizers said, hey, why don't you just um, put these videos together and make a film? You know, and I thought, oh, that sounds very easy. Um, not. <laughs> uh, 2015, 2017, collaborating with Mohammed Rommel, who is a Bangladeshi filmmaker. Uh, two years later, we're uh, uh, at this stage of being able to show the film. The interviews, um, basically, uh, uh, as I said, are, is to really uh, spark from discussion. Work. What I say is along the supply chain. It's not that we want you in Vancouver to feel sorry for or run to Bangladesh and help them organize. You'll see, they don't need help organizing. But hopefully this will inspire you to organize from where you are at. And so one of the things that we want to launch on April 24th is the uh, fifth anniversary of Lorana Plaza is a discussion about organizing along the supply chain, meaning from the person who makes your garment to you who wears the garment and to you who is also a worker in your workplaces. So we've been doing a lot of worker-to-worker -worker dialogue, and I'm going to end there. So this, the um, loop that's been going on is that when we showed the film in March uh, as for International Women's Day, that was the first screening of it in New York. April 24th of last year, we did simultaneous screenings in England, Australia, and uh, various cities in the United States with local community groups. So I really love the model that you have here, which is to engage the community. And what we're calling is worker-to-worker -worker dialogue. So the film should be in dialogue with you. Uh, we went, I went back in the summer and uh, I showed the film to the workers who were in the film and then other garment workers as well. And I think the best compliment uh, I could ever get uh, was when the workers said um, in one of the screenings, finally somebody has shown us our life the way it is truly experienced. And um, I think that was really, for me, a very emotional moment because that's exactly what I set out to do, is to sort of tell the lies from the point of view of not just women, because there are male, or male workers too in the garment industry, but from the garment workers' perspective. So with that, um, so there's a, these are just pictures from the screenings. The screenings were in the homes. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of them are sort of uh, slum areas, homes of the workers. Um, and one of the slides, um, so these are the homes. I'm going to find one. Ah, so look at Saif. Um, he's watching because you'll see, hopefully, he's in the film and he was giggling throughout the whole film. So it's very adorable. Um, I'm going to end there because I know that's uh, more than my 10 minutes. I'm going to be part of the panel. Uh, I want to be in dialogue with you. I want to build relationships with you around organizing and thinking about how we might animate and reimagine uh, the sort of labor movement. In the United States, um, we're really in a crisis around labor organizing. We have a really uh, a, a case that's coming down <clears throat> that's threatening public sector unions, um, Janus. So I think there's really a moment that we need to seize and to really uh, talk about how we can activate the labor movement, uh, really for all of us. Thank you.